What is your biggest turn off on a date? I don't like it when the date um, uses a phone. I know, I don't know, I don't know what, I think he caveman at like that. Uh, like, what are your thoughts on uh, marrying someone from a different religion? Blind Love Studio is a reality show which gathers single individuals to a light-hearted matchmaking session. Each participant will be labelled in number and wears a masquerade mask to promote love through understanding instead of appearance. The session starts with self-introduction by each participant. If they wish to, they can perform a short routine of their talent to highlight their traits. The understanding session will commence in two rounds. Round 1, a dating coach will customise three questions to each gender group in alternate turns. Round 2, each participant will be able to direct one final question to one participant that they are interested in. Next, each participant shall write down the number of the individual whom they are keen to develop a relationship with. Participants will reveal the number of their choice at the same time. Participants can also opt to not write any number if he or she is not interested in any participant. Finally, each mutually interested participant will remove each other's mask. They will proceed to introduce their name and age. Now that is what we call blind love. Hi, I'm participant one. I'm currently working in a logistic company and I'm also a freelance actor. So during my free time, I enjoy listening to music, reading books and hunting good food with my parents during the weekend. And I'm kind of an introvert and uh, pretty nervous coming on set today. Hi, I'm participant number four, but I hope to be number one in their hearts. I'm a commercial model who is also pursuing my interest in music, film and dance. So they make me a romantic and introvert and I develop my sense of fashion. I'm looking for someone who is honest and obedient. <laughs> so funny when I put it that way. <laughs> loves arts and crafts, loves animals and if he does photography, I'll gladly be his model. I am participant number two. I currently work in a um, professional gaming industry. So I'm actually a esports programs executive. During my free time, I stay active. So I actually um, do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on the side. But I also love other sports. So surfing, diving, swimming, water polo. Yeah, anything water. So <laughs> um, I do look for a woman that is independent and opinionated because I like someone who is strong will and can stand up for herself. Uh, during my free time, I write poems. So for this talent segment, I'll be reading a poem. This poem is relating Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to life. And yeah, I just, I just thought that it's good to relate something <coughs> to life, like something I do to life. So here goes. <sighs> <laughs> Rolling with life. Nailed on my knees, hands on my thighs. Looking into the fierce gaze of life. Planning out my next step. Watching out for life's every movement. He reached out to get a firm grip on me. Took the bait. I got ahead of myself, thinking he did. That was the shot for. Going for the attack, I swooped into God. Back exposed that he took. A real choke as I resisted. As he pulled my head, neck was exposed and it was over. Gasping. This wasn't supposed to be. How naive. So I tapped. Took a breather. Here we go again. Learning from the failures to better life. Thank you. Hi, I'm number five. My current occupation is a freelance actress, but we know how that turned out thanks to this situation. <laughs> okay, um, in my free time when I'm trying to survive, uh, I like playing games. I also like watching shows on Netflix, pretty basic, but yeah. And then uh, I also like making a lot of handicrafts, which I will show you guys later. Um, my ideal kind of guy would be punctual because I feel like that is a very underrated trait to have nowadays. And uh, it, will, it will also be great if he was funny because I enjoy humour. Thank you. <laughs> so these are the handicrafts that I do. Uh, they are basically hair ornaments. That uh, Japanese people like to wear with their kimonos. 
Yeah, so I base them off like series and characters. So this one is Sailor Moon. Oh. Let me just <laughs> pin it more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is based off uh, Harry Potter actually. So this oh is the Ravenclaw God. one. Wow. It can double as a brooch also. Oh. I'm gonna like pin it onto myself. Uh. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Okay, but I'm actually not Ravenclaw, I'm a Gryffindor, but here we go. <laughs> Hi, I am Participant 3. I am currently a uh, final year undergraduate doing political science. And I find myself to be a blend of seeming contradictions. At times, I am pragmatic and serious. Other times, or most times, I am romantic and playful. And when I have time, I like to read, I exercise, and I listen to jazz, especially those kind of incomprehensible kind of jazz. And I play the saxophone as well. In fact, I'll be showing a, a short little part of one of my favourites. It's called The Way We Were by Barbara Streisand. I'm Participant 6 and uh, I recently graduated with a Bachelor of Accountancy degree but I'm looking to further my studies in analytics. Uh, I don't identify as an extrovert or introvert but I think I lean more towards introversion and in my free time I like to exercise and dance and I prepared a short choreography for today. I'm Nicolette Fernandez, Chief Coach at Fleet Image Gaikai. So I've helped several clients through my years of coaching at Fleet Image and I'm very, very familiar with the obstacles that they tend to face um, in terms of their journey to dating success. So if you want to know the rough number of how many clients I've helped, I've helped about over a thousand probably by now. Yeah. So um, today, I'm just here to have a very interesting discussion with our participants and get the ball rolling with a couple of questions. So are you guys ready? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Awesome! Then we can get started. And my very first question will be directed to the guys, starting with um, participant number one can start answering. Okay, so how would you guys describe your perfect date experience? Participant number one, would you like to start? You know, after the first day, we get a chance to go the second day, then yeah, to me it's more of like having the second date again. So what I do normally is I'll go to places like maybe at uh, Explanade there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, for me, I kind of like places which are much more chill and uh, like to listen to music and hopefully the girl that I bring along would also like the same thing. My perfect date would normally start with a coffee date. So I love to frequent coffee places and I like to bring uh, my date to a coffee place to get to know her better in the afternoon. And then if there's time, hopefully there's like a arts festival that goes on and then bring her to the arts festival. Um, by then it should be dinner and then we have a good dinner together and then we'll just end off the night. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a perfect date to me, just to get to know the person better because it's the first date, right? It's all about knowing the other party first. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think a perfect date would meet, to me wouldn't be location, um, set or anything because I think it depends on, on the person. I think what's more important is that we can connect with each other and we can't wait to see each other for the second date. So I think that's the most important for me. Alright, so the next question would be directed at the ladies. Uh, participant number four, you can answer first. Okay, so what traits do you guys find most attractive in a man? 
Mm, okay, so previously in my introduction, I said that I was looking for someone who is honest and obedient. But I think that at the end of the day, it's very important that a guy is independent um, slash ambitious because I think career would definitely matter the most to him. And it definitely provides or gives me a sense of stability like in my future with him. Yeah. I guess for me, wow, I really appreciate a guy with good witty humour, for sure. Because um, I'm quite fast with my conversation, so if the guy cannot keep up with me, I think that's a shame. <laughs> I, like, I prefer like fast, uh, funny conversations. And um, I guess financial stability is quite important. I mean, he doesn't have to have a car, but at least, you know, savings will be great. And then um, if he likes animals, that will be a bonus also. My idea of a perfect trait would be like, we at least have to be on the same frequency. Because I realised that uh, even if you have a lot of common interests with that person, I feel like if you're on a different wavelength, it's very difficult to keep the conversation going just based on interest. So you really have to like, have the, like, have some common interests but have the same humour and laugh at the same things to keep the conversation going. Yeah. Next question, directed at the guys again. Uh, participant number two can start answering this time. Okay, what is your biggest turn off on a date? Biggest turn off would be disconnection. So I don't like it when the date um, uses her phone. I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest turn off because that shows that uh, she's not interested and clearly she's not enjoying the date. So there's no point continuing the date. Yeah, so that's the biggest turn off. Yeah, you know, surprisingly, actually, um, at Fleet Image, we did a poll, we did a dating poll, and that was one of the top answers for guys. Like, they find it very unattractive when a woman doesn't give them enough attention, i.e., using the phone when things get quiet. Um, I think for me, the biggest turn off, usually, I don't, I'm not I'm quite okay with things, but I, if you were to squeeze an answer from me, I, I guess the um, biggest turn off would be when the lady is slightly more picky. So first that usually when we are quite um, cool with things, we try to portray, naturally we try to portray a, a, a kind of like normal and cool image of ourselves. So, so if the first date and you're quite picky, then kind of reveals a bit about yourself. Um, so there's a difference between um, being picky and knowing what you like or don't want. But then being picky means like... Um, like nitty gritty yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, understood. Like I want the date being about the date, that kind of. That kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Or prawn me, the one prawn, that kind. Oh, my God. <laughs> or fish bone, the one the fish bone. <laughs> what kind of people have you guys been going out with? These kind of like carrots. Oh, yes. I was just saying nice girls, nice guys. <laughs> so, I'm kind of the person that, like, like, you know, girls who, when we eat, finish, then a girl will ask, like, oh, how about we split the bill? I'm the kind of person that likes these kind of girls, but sometimes when I go on a date where the girls don't even initiate anything, it's a bit of a turn off. That's one. Yeah. Ladies, um, participant number five. I always need to count in my head. Yes, you, <laughs> you will start the ball rolling with your answer, okay? So, following up from his, I think this is a very nice follow up. Does it matter if a guy pays for your first date and why? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> because I just had the situation recently and it was so shitty. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, for me personally, I would offer to go Dutch. But it will earn extra points uh, from me if the guy says, no, 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 I'll get it. That's where alpha. Mm, yeah. Understand. Yeah. yeah. But if he says, if he gives me like a valid like um, answer, like, um, is it okay if we go Dutch? Like, if he asks politely, I'm cool. Yeah. I've never had a guy pay for me Oof. before, but like, yeah, as in, <laughs> as in, I've never really gone on many dates before, so I, I'm not one to say, oh. but then, like, um, I like it when the guy offers to pay, the guy says like, um, like, it's okay, you can cover for dessert, that kind of thing, and then I cover for dessert, and then I don't like the guy to, like, insistently want to cover for everything. Like if he pay for dinner, then after that he say, okay, you cover for dessert, but he pays for my dessert. So I feel kind of like a bit, yeah, like let me pay for the dessert. At least let me pay for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm that kind of person. So it's like, there's always like a, Different. your turn and my turn and your turn, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, alternating, I think yeah. is really good as well. It yeah, gives both parties the opportunity to, you know, give a little, yeah. let's say, yeah. 
So actually, personally, I would choose uh, alternating as well. But again, like this one depends, really, really depends on personality and location as well. I say that because unfortunately, I have a bad experience myself. So like, um, usually if the guy chooses a location, I will not assume that he'll pay. But I'll be very cautious because in case he chose somewhere expensive, then obviously I'll change the location. But if he insists, then I'll go there thinking that he will foot the bill. And uh, I will not go Dutch for that. Um, so this happened to me and this guy picked a dim sum restaurant. I thought that he was going to choose Ding Tai Fung. And I'm okay to like split the bill to be honest. But he picked somewhere in a hotel and it was actually, yeah, it was actually really very expensive. So I thought it would be nice if I asked. And he said he would tell me later. And then later he didn't tell me, he asked me for the bill two days later. <laughs> yeah, so this question is really difficult. So I like at the end of the day I realized that maybe it's just location. Yeah. Is it okay if I share my bad experience? Yeah, please. please. Okay, so basically it was um it was a Tinder date. We decided to meet up for dinner. And then um the place was was a normal, like average cost one, okay. So I'm definitely down with going Dutch. So when the bill came, I, I think I went to the toilet or something, so he took the bill first. So when I came back, I say how much was the bill? I had I said it in the with the intention of like going Dutch, right? And then you know what he said to me, you know? He said, Well, you can don't pay if you don't want to. <gasps> oh my god. And I was like, excuse me, give me the bill, I pay now you right now. Oh my god, that's I tell you what, the cost of the meal I was not even fifty dollars for both of us. What? Yeah, I know. Bad choice of words, I guess. I know, I don't know, I don't know what he, I think he caveman at that. <laughs> no, it would yeah. be better if he said, oh yes, I pay. Then I would that, be, that would still be better but than the way is the way he say it also. I know. Yeah. I get it, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Do you sound like that? Like huh? the way you uh, represented him was did he sound the same way? He mumbled. Like he mumbled <laughs> a lot. Okay, I I cannot stand mumbling, sorry. But yeah, he basically oh you can but at least, at least like now, sometimes you guys understand like what we've been through. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, not like, it's not like we don't want to pay. Like <laughs> something means me snapped out, I was yeah, like, yeah, yo, yeah, give me, I'm going to pay right now. I'm going to pay, I can pay my own shit, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, that was, yeah. The stress, the stress is real, guys. <laughs> but but guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. guys as well, I think they always struggle with like, should we pay, should we yeah, not? Understand, you know, yeah. like, will they feel offended? Will, will they think like, I'm where we don't think they are independent mm. enough and all that. So yeah, this this is why I face with a lot of clients as well. They don't know whether to pay for the woman or not and what their thoughts are. So this is very enlightening. So can I ask a question with regards to what we were talking about earlier? Yeah, or, sure. Um, so if we have no clue, and would the, de would the default be for the guys to pay? I think that's the most safest route. And if I were to ask a lady out for a date, I must be prepared to, to pay for the first date at least. Mm. I would say it's really dependent on uh, both parties. So I normally share with clients that if you're really unsure, you can ask or you can initiate like, hey, um, I can get the bill first. Uh, yeah, maybe later you can get dessert or something like, you know. And that's really the safest answer because then it gives it gives them a rough idea like, oh, maybe, maybe he won't feel emasculated or anything if I also offer to pay, which some guys do feel. Um, and there are a lot of male clients who actually share budget constraints because if they continuously are seeking love, they will go out on a couple of dates, right? Um, so it's very expensive to keep going to restaurants and I'm sure ladies, you guys were also sharing your experiences, it would be very expensive on your end as well, should you want to also pay, right? So I normally suggest actually for a first date, maybe you guys can go to a nice cafe, not Starbucks or Coffee Bean. <laughs> Those are for your studying, your insurance agents meetings and all that, okay? It's not, it's not for dates, yeah. Um, so I would suggest, you know, for example, Dobby got there's this nice cafe called Artistique or oh, something. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they have art jamming yeah. there as well. Um, you know, sometimes I go there for something called a date analysis. It's like a mock date with clients and it's a really nice feel. Uh, pricing wise, it's all right. You know, I would say it's the same as a Starbucks coffee or whatever, or just slightly more expensive. And I always tell them the comparison, like, would you rather, you know, go on a first date, have a more relaxed time at a cafe, you know, because it's less um, strenuous or pressurizing as compared to a dinner or lunch date because everyone has the misconception that hey I need to dress up and all that but if it's a coffee date it's more casual it's more relaxing would you rather have that and also the leniency of you know paying for two cups of coffee makes sense which like you know is maybe a max of $30 if it's both like 15 each as compared to maybe spending $60 or over 
even at a more affordable restaurant, like which would you pick, right? Um, and I think it's also good because on the off chance, touch wood, I hope this is wood, um, your dates don't go well, a cup of coffee can be anywhere between 30 minutes to as long as you want. Just drink in yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes so much sense now. You know? Yeah, that makes so mm. much sense. Yeah, yeah. so um, if you want to go on a first date, it's a very good way to just... So if it's 30 minutes, then you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would say some people, they warm up differently, so maybe give it about like 45 minutes to an hour before you decide. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. sometimes if they're really quiet, it could be, again, because they're inexperienced or they haven't dated for a while. Um, yeah, so it'd be good to just give it a little bit more time for them to warm up and yourself to warm up. Okay. Yeah. So um, now, again, guys, this time, uh, participant number three, you can answer first, okay? So what sort of values are you looking for in a potential partner? Um, this is quite easy for me. Values-wise, definitely um, hardworking, ambitious. You know what you want. And, and I guess we can complement each other in different ways. So for instance, um, I might lack areas in, I don't know, um, motivation or, or, or academic. And then, you know, we, we have different um, skill sets or even values that we can help each other you know, grow eventually. And I think the, the, the most important part would be um, the ability to embrace growth in the relationship because we're all growing. Yeah, I, I will agree. Uh, this is something I coach clients as well. Growth is very important mm. yeah, in a relationship. You can't always be fixated on uh, certain things. Compromise is very important, yeah. For me, I don't really have any thoughts on values because I'm a kind of person who is a bit introvert so the most important is maybe the girl can be more outgoing because I'm not really outgoing. I personally like a girl that's independent. Uh, I don't really like to make decisions for her like if anything she should make de decisions for herself and I find that very attractive in a woman who knows what she wants and she actually pursues that because I think that is a admirable trait like I will get motivated looking at you chasing your dreams the same way I chase my own dreams and we both have our own goals, but we support each other. So I think ultimately values is having that person who is able to support you and be independent, you know, just live your own life. Cause I'm gonna appreciate you for who you are and not what you want, uh, what you try to be what I want you to be. You get what I mean? Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing guys. All right. And um, last question for the ladies, of course, participant number six, you can start first, okay? What are some examples of conversation killers? I think some examples of conversation killers, like on text, is especially like if you answer one word. Every time I send, I send you a long text and then you answer one word, I am unable to reply to anything if you just send an okay. And if it's in real life, um, like if I share something and you don't share anything in return, so like let's say I share about my school, my life, my day, and then you just go like, Oh, okay, that's nice. Then, like, what am I gonna add on on top of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you have to offer something like, oh yeah, I have a similar experience. I did this, this, this too. So we have a mutual uh, exchange of experience. Or like at least he offers some encouragement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm, at the top of my head, I think heavy topics, especially on first dates, are uh, really <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can go into that, but like not on the first date and definitely like the mutual sharing. I also think that um, I see this a lot in friendships as well. Like when, when, cause girls, it's not that we are emotional, but when we do do like the heart to heart conversations, sometimes guys will be like, can you like calm down? Or can you like just oh, relax? Excuse me. Yeah, or like, or like, oh, it's, it's really not that bad. Like you're, you're a pretty girl, like you can do better. It's, it's like, you know, like, Sometimes I really just want you to put yourself in my shoes and understand like what I've been through. Like that's all I really need actually. Instead of like the, you know, like just relax, like things will get better, life will get better. We all know life will get better, but can you just try to make me feel better about it? <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. I feel like they just talk both my answers, really. Oh. <laughs> like, anything you gotta add? Wow, anything to add? Uh? Um, I guess to add on to your point, like I believe in balanced investments. So if the guy were to text me long, 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 right? Then I'll text back long, long, long. But if you give me one word answer, so I'll just be prepared that I'll give the same. Yeah, I'll just do a K <laughs> with a full stop. <laughs> no, no, I can just do, just do pego already. <laughs> but yeah, I guess heavy topics also, I mean like if you talk about politics, I can't really comment much. If you want to talk about 
animal abuse, then I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, I mean, generally, I like to keep things like hearted lah. I mean, heavy topics are definitely for much, much later. Mm. Or, or if he starts talking about his exes, oh my god, yeah. that's so true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll be like, okay, noted with things. Oh my god, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But girls do that too. Like we need to check ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so for the topic of access, right, it's actually a taboo topic because it tends to bring the conversation to a downhill spiral. And normally for first and second dates, people like more uh, genuine, lighthearted questions like for example, oh, what's your favourite ice cream flavour? What did you want to be growing up? Um, heavier topics should be left a little bit later, yes, agreed, because you want to set a positive, lasting first impression. And if you were to do that by starting with very sensitive topics, you may rub each other off wrongly. Yeah. Can I just add on? Like, um, I think this not only applies to like guys, but like friendships in general. Like, I've had friends that um, sometimes when I share something, not even something that sensitive, but when I share something and then they just dismiss it. They say like, oh, it's no problem. Oh, like I have a bigger problem, that kind of thing. And then I just feel very silenced then throughout the whole conversation, I will just like slowly get quieter and quieter. Okay. Then I will just stop talking. That's so true. People don't know this, but this label as denial and minimization. Mm. It's actually really <laughs> yeah. psychologically like not good. They lack empathy, is it? Like, it's, yeah, cause like you minimize, like you make the problem like smaller. Yeah, then it doesn't make the person oh feel God. better and doesn't solve the problem Isn't as well. it like the all lives matter thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. We will not go there. Yeah, we'll not go there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's true, I would say. Um, comparing issues and all that is just a very good way to kill off a conversation. Um, so just now someone was asking, how do you escape certain uh, dates, right? Yeah, if you know, you want to do that, you definitely escape the date. But if the other party decides to start overwhelming you with an entire life story, then it's on you as well. Eh? So, you know, uh, <laughs> you can decide what you want to do. Okay. All guys, of course it's not all, we're not generalization. But from my circle, I don't think that guys, you know, are that emotionally detached. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think that's a huge issue among my friends at least. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know what the, the ladies think, you know, it seems to be a big enough issue for, to be a turn off. I, I would say it's, it's not very gender specific. Yeah. It's just people in general. There are some people, again, you know, um, they may not be as educated or maybe they haven't had a lot of experiences as well. They never got to socialize enough. So they lack the uh, social awareness, hence why they react the way they do. No, actually I agree with you because like some females do that too. They do it to mm. dates and they do it to female friends. Yeah, so it's just like in general, like these are really conversation killers. Mm. Yeah. So if you know that this person is going on a date for the first time, Will you like give more chance, you know, like a bit more, a bit more flaws, a bit more mistakes, like you know, not oh, like not very, doubt. Um, yeah, yeah, not very um, in line with social cues like that, you know. So are we more inclined to give them more, more space because they, you already know that they are, it's their first date or, or second or third date only. I would say it really depends on the individual because there's no right or wrong, right? Everyone has preferences. It isn't wrong if you know you want something more up to perfection, I would say. Um, and it's not wrong if you want to give a little bit more leeway on your first date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's about, you know, um, the questions are skewed over to understand from both sides, like what you guys may want a little bit more as well. So I think you guys can sort of answer your own questions, you know, for example, like what you look for in a partner, what kind of values, um, what kind of conversations you want to have. So I think from your answers, you can decide for yourself how you would want the date to go or whether you should have a second date or not. Yeah. But what, what would consider as deep? So like if I ask you questions like, um, what is your life goals, what are your struggles? Is that considered very deep for a first date? Because I just want to know you more and knowing your struggles, I learn, I learn more about you because I see how you handle your struggles and how you grow from there. So these are questions that I would generally will ask on the first date. Yeah, Look at your response, oh. yeah. Yeah. response. So is Are that too deep? Me? Because I don't know what, I think, what's your I think it's fine. I, I think it's fine. I think when we meant by deep, it's really like like what she mentioned, like the all lives matter, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. like like we get that we get that sometimes we want to keep up with current affairs, right? Like the recent like all the like social agendas mm -hmm. and all that. But 
it doesn't mean that at present moment, like at our date, we have to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like I would love to know your goals, you know, like it's interesting, like I'll definitely know because like if you're studying or you're working now, then it's definitely like leading to some direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I would say those questions are alright, but if you start the conversation with those, then it may be very heavy. <laughs> uh, you may not get the answers you want because you need to build rapport first. Because in the initial stages, right, through observation as well, um, when you are just getting to know each other, you do not have any background knowledge. You do not know what kind of answers the other person would expect or how much would be too much. You know, so chances are you will give a very short answer. So that's why you have to start easy a little bit, um, mixing up with maybe a few close-ended questions and open-ended questions until you guys feel comfortable enough. And you realise that slowly you will touch on maybe the slightly deeper level things. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I have a question for number five. Oh, that's me. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, like, what are your thoughts on uh, marrying someone from a different religion? <laughs> wow, loaded wow. question. Eh. Um, to be fair, I've never dated anyone outside my religion, which is mm. non existent, by the way. Uh, <sighs> I think I'll be open to it uh, as long as we got a big connection together. Then right. I think religion shouldn't matter. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number four, do you smoke? No. Okay. Uh, number two? Mm. I cannot ask, I want to ask, do you smoke? But then that, I cannot repeat question, right? I think he doesn't. Really cause, a deal breaker. Yeah. What me you think he doesn't? I'm asking him, not you. But he asked me just now if I smoke what. So he but what if you guys want to smoke together? What if you want to smoke together <laughs> as you? Huh? Okay, okay, fine, fine. Ask, ask. <laughs> okay, to number two. Do you smoke? No, never before. Okay. Yeah. Um, to participant four. Um, are you okay with financial independence only after a few years? <laughs> it's like saying, do I want money now or later? Oh. Is your money gonna is your money gonna compound? <laughs> I think he's asking you whether you broke or not, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Of no, to your partner, your view yeah, of the partner. Yeah, I'm joking. Yeah, of course, of course, independence later. Yeah, because I feel like there's no like specific time where you'll be like set in your life. Yeah. Question to number three. Do you like have any vices? Um, I don't smoke. I seldom drink. And that's about it. I don't want knife as well, I think that's a, that's a that would vice. That be nice, that's nice, that's, that's good to so know. That's so funny! <laughs> that's considered a vice, right? Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, to number three, uh, how aggressive are you in terms of physical touch? For the first date. What, what? For the first date. Oh, okay. I need more contact. I tried my best. Okay, so, um, so for the first date, I think to me, generally, touch is quite important, but first date, no, I don't think um, it's quite. I don't think it's polite to do that. No hand grabbing. Yeah, of course not. I think I feel quite uncomfortable myself as well. I, I <laughs> <laughs> like for the first date, you just. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, mean, I panicked date, there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had some experience with your first date? <laughs> Where you had someone just grab your hand or something like that. I think more than a hand, yeah, but the way oh she feels. Oh <laughs> no, as in like, personally, I don't like people who are very aggressive. Like, first date, like, oh, oh want to grab your hand, want to be like the Actually. alpha, that kind of thing. Like, suddenly you first date, then give you like a bouquet of roses, like excessive oh. stuff, I cannot. Oh. Yeah, like, like, let's just be friends, chill. Like, suddenly first date, he tell you, I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why <laughs> <laughs> why is like, why he blow your yeah, mind? Why, yeah, why he just like starts blowing his saxophone like okay, 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 okay. For the record, I don't go blowing around. <laughs> if that answers your question. Oh my god, I really cannot want to. Wait, I cannot even open the pen. Oh my <laughs> god. Over again. <laughs> I just want to secretly see what people write there, right? No, you cannot see. I want to see what you're writing. You cannot see. Wait, show to who? The camera. <laughs> like some wedding proposal, I guess, yeah. 
Okay, I, yeah. I'm sorry if I hurt you. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay, I, I think you need to help me with this. I'm very bad. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Wenceslas. I'm 25. My mm. name is La Eun. I'm way older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 30. Can't tell. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was very nervous throughout the entire thing. It's quite interesting because I don't know how the opposite gender looks like. And yeah, I, I think <laughs> that sounds I really wrong. I think like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I enjoyed the entire process though mm. Mm, because uh, we had quite a few conversations, and I think throughout the conversations, it gave me a lot of perspective on what you guys, you you girls thought about just now. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was told to come here with an open mind. I already know that like, I'm definitely one of the oldest here already. <coughs> but um, that didn't deter me for giving this a chance. <laughs> so I'm glad that I took the time to come down here to try this thing. I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. Okay. From the front and back. Oh, can mess your hair also? Oh my god, it's messed. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Close your eyes, yeah. Oh, I think can. <laughs> Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. I am Ling Jun or Jun. Ling Jun, okay. Hello. Your age? 24. <laughs> 24. I'm Jade, I'm 26. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I haven't actually been on a lot of dates, so this is something new for me. Maybe special <laughs> as well. <laughs> and um, why don't we let Jade do the talking? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I think coming on here, everyone was really very nervous. This is very new and refreshing. And I'm really excited to make all these new new friends and get to know each other better also. <laughs> Actually, just now behind the scenes, I think he's like the most playful one of all the lot. So, so quite interesting. And then after that, later we found out that he was the guy with the saxophone. And then I was like, no. <laughs> they they so were marketing smart. the saxophone? No. Got people play saxophone, come, come. I'm marketing you being oh, okay. the saxophonist now because I have a soft spot for saxophones. <laughs> Equally playful. And I think from the first impression, it was pretty clear. Um, yeah. What? <laughs> I thought there's more. 